presents Classics Illustrated. Immortal masterpieces by the world's greatest authors. Classics of literature. The great works of the world's most renowned storytellers. Robert Louis Stevenson. James Fenimore Cooper. Herman Melville. Edgar Allan Poe. Stephen Crane. Edgar Rice Burroughs. In tonight's Classics Illustrated presentation, a young scientist hurdles the barrier of time and finds himself locked in a struggle to prevent the destruction of Earth. It's a tale of one man's love and devotion in the world of the future, an exciting new version of H.G. Wells' masterpiece, The Time Machine. Starring John Beck as Neil Perry, Priscilla Barnes as Weena, Andrew Duggan as Worthington, Jack Crucian as John Bedford, Rosemary DeCamp as Agnes, and Whit Missel as Branley. Transmission for the general on the video line. Put it up on channel two. General, that unmanned Russian satellite we've been tracking has changed course again. Does it appear to be a control change, NORAD? Negative. The satellite is headed down toward Earth. Feed through an orbital update on channel three. This changes all our calculations. With the decay rate increased, will she make another orbit? Negative. It's already under the atmosphere. Uh, pass through a new impact projection. Washington on channel one, sir. Bring me that new impact projection as soon as NORAD sends it. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Secretary. Finally pried some more information out of the Russians, General. Well, anything useful? Hardly. This satellite is more lethal than the last Ehrenberg. How lethal, sir? The uranium on board could reach critical mass on impact. Well, what are the Russians doing to prevent that happening? Well, the Russians say there's nothing they can do. General, this satellite is out of control. Well, I'm not sure we can do anything either, sir. She won't make another orbit. What about that new missile Meg is working on, the one that destroys satellites? Well, it's never been tested. That makes it pretty risky. General, are you still projecting the satellite to drop somewhere in Alaska? General? I, uh, I just received an update. And? We're now projecting California. Where in California? Los Angeles, dead center. You have got to stop it. Could you get the new missile system in the air in time? It's only a possibility. Well, it's the only possibility we've got. I'll get you full presidential approval. Put Vandenberg on two. Vandenberg reporting, sir. We're going to attempt to launch the X-7B. What's your status? I'll check, General. If we 
pushed hard, I'd say an hour to pad, an hour to launch. You've got to shave that. We'll do our best, sir, but you know the special X-7B guidance computer is not in place here. You'll have to patch directly to the mega computer. Theirs is the only one capable of doing it. Wants you on the video channel. Good morning, General. It's not so good. We've got a crippled Russian satellite in final orbit heading for LA. We're going to chance using the X 7B. But it's never been tested. I know. But you sounded confident about Dr. Perry's new approach to guidance control. Well, that's true. And he's already programmed the guidance tapes. But uh, there's so many things that could go wrong. OK, there are risks. Our only choice is to take them. Now be ready to launch at 10.30 hours. 10.30? If Mega pulls this off, we're going to save a lot of lives. The Pentagon repays that kind of performance, Ralph. Now get going. All right, General. Attention, everyone. Attention, please. We are launching the X-7B. Now get the guidance tape set up and start a check through to Vandenberg. Send Charlie to find Neil Perry right away. All tracking systems go. Roll complete and we're finished. Gyros checked. T minus 20 and counting. Stand by for a moment. Where's Neil Perry? Charlie's still looking for him. Mega, we confirm guidance input. Guidance Do you copy? Roger, standing by. Arming circuit activated. T minus 10, 10 and counting. 9, Nine eight, 8, ignition sequence has seven, started. 6, six five, 5, 4, four three, 3, 2, two one, we have ignition. So far, so good. Mega, she's your baby now. Roger, Mega is taking guidance control. Correct, it's 84.5. The missile trajectory is slightly out of line with the satellite, but that correction should do it. The Russian satellite started re-entry. Have you corrected missile trajectory, Mega? We just programmed the correction, General. She's into retrograde. The X-7B should be closing. Ralph, I can't understand this. The XB-7 is off course. She's not responding. About the back there. Nothing there either. Wait a minute. Now she's correcting. But the commands are intermittent. The transmitter, maybe. No. It's our computer. Where the devil's Neil Perry? Good morning, Harry. How are you doing, Doc? Charlie? Come on, I'll brief you as we go. Mega, what's going on? You're getting farther off course. We're working on it, General. Well, you better work fast. That satellite is only 800 miles from L.A. Now it's Thank goodness you're here. The computer.
computer's not making accurate guidance corrections. Get this room cleared, Ralph. Everybody but Ed, and do it fast. What, 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 what? Well, I don't have time to explain. Mega, if you don't correct soon, you'll never reach that satellite. Clear the room. Everybody out but Ed. Quickly. Satellites come on now, come on. From LA. Let's go. Move. Mega, what the devil's going on down there? We're working on it, General. What you do? You're getting farther off course. Well, General, you're not being of any help. Good day, General. What's your last fix? 3715 North, 0250 East. Feed a correction to 0050 West. But they do it. Then refeed your pitch correction. It's working now. She's responding. She's coming back on course. Drop pitch to 89.6. You're trying to bring her down from above? That's right. We don't have time for anything else. If we miss, we'll have a satellite and a missile coming down on LA. That occurred to me. Ease pitch to 8.6. Activate infrared sensor. This is NORAD. We have confirmed satellite destroyed, no radiation detected. Good work, Mega. Simply incredible. Not if you stop to think about it, Ralph. <sighs> There's nothing incredible about common sense except it seems to get lost in technology. I don't understand. Everybody here knows that memory cores react to minor temperature changes. We had 15 excess people in that room. Their body heat simply pushed the temperatures beyond tolerable limits. Still, you reprogrammed that computer in a matter of seconds and with only a pocket calculator. We might not be so lucky next time. Good morning. Congratulations. Good morning, Agnes. What's this? Results of the seaweed fertilizer project. Oh, it's lovely. Thank you. I hope I'm not the only female to receive this honor. You are. A healthy male should not spend all his time locked up in a stuffy lab. Up all hours, no social life, neglecting your health. What's that? Breakfast. Oh, just what I mean. A two-day-old corned beef sandwich. I'm in a hurry. I have to get to the lab. Ah, ignoring once again that under this rubble lies three months' worth of work on the laser project? Three and a half months. Well, isn't Haverson's pet project considered top priority? Not by me. Are you saying that all these months in the lab you've been working on something else? Something that'll mean a lot more to the world than a laser death ray. Does Haverson know about this? Not yet. Why? He called. Wants to see you. Okay. Thanks. Hello, Hi, Susie. Hi. Can I go in? Sure. We have to know now. The Worthington will be here on Monday. Ah, come in, Neil. Good to see you. Ralph and I were just talking about you. For a man who's been with the Mega Corporation for such a short time, you have some remarkable accomplishments to your credit including that one this morning. Well, thank you. Uh, we've uh, more or less let you alone, allowed you to choose your own projects, control the funding, and uh, that's worked out rather well. Well, I'm very glad you feel that way. However, 
for this kind of latitude. Occasionally, we must ask for your concerted effort for some of our priority projects. Meaning the laser death ray. The government determines the priorities. And as you may know, this year's achievements determine next year's funding. Neil, Mega's board chairman, J.R. Worthington, will be here Monday to uh, review our progress. Now, uh, he's certain to ask why we're so behind on the laser project. And uh, there's also happened to be some curiosity expressed regarding the $20 million allotted to your special project. Well, now, I'm sure that uh, whatever Neil comes up with will be worthwhile. Well, so am I. And I'm equally sure that it is imperative that we be filled in on all the details so there are no surprises on Monday. The project hasn't been tested yet. I still need more time. It's all right, Neil. Just uh, show us what you got. I brought a model. You see, I uh, more or less anticipated that you'd want to know where Mega's money was going. Neil, I can't believe this. Twenty million dollars for just that. Well, I'll have the full-scale machine ready to test as soon as Ed's team finishes with the power module. Uh, hopefully within a month. Uh, Neil, uh, just what is it? A time machine. A time machine? Yes. If my calculations are correct, it'll be able to escape the time dimension. You mean travel to the future or to the past? Hopefully both. Incredible. Well, in principle, it utilizes an electromagnetic force field to molecularly reconstruct the space-time continuum. Very interesting. But what good is a mock-up? Oh, but this is not a mock-up. You mean it really works? I hope so. You mean you spent $20 million and you don't know if it will work? Well, we'll find out right now. There we go. Power's on. Ralph, will you do the honors? You push either the forward or the backward control button. And take your hand away quickly. I wouldn't want you to lose it. I'll try forward. question, but what you are very close to a major scientific breakthrough. It'll be a brilliant achievement. But I'm afraid for the moment this presents the Mega Corporation with some problems. Problems? Well, yes. For, for one thing, what are its practical applications? I'm presenting you with a chance to see history as it occurred to, to look into the future. And the benefit of this? Well, we could learn from our mistakes, profit from future knowledge. All very commendable for the long-range goal. Now, if we could get government funding and an extended development program, or perhaps if things go well in the near future... In the future? But I am so close! Nevertheless, it's going to have to wait. Now, we're going to need both you and Ed's team on a brand-new top-priority project. What project? The antimatter bomb. The antimatter bomb. Neil, it's a government priority project, and it is our bread and butter. Well, it's a sad comment on the state of the world. Well, still, it's a fact of life.
Starting Monday, your laboratory is going to have to be converted to the new project. Oh, look, Neil. There'll be plenty of time for your project later on. Besides, you'll need more research and proper safeguards. Yes. Maggie is big on safeguards, isn't it? I think he'll cool down. He's a dreamer. Brilliant, but unrealistic. A time machine. That's really different. I've got to say that. I was so close to having a full-scale machine ready. In a couple of more months, I could... I could... Oh, doctor, that won't help. Why don't you take the weekend off? I happen to know that the new receptionist is dying to go out with you. Agnes. You thought it would take your mind off your troubles. Thank you, but it won't. Dr. Perry's office. Oh, just a second, I'll ask him. Uh, did you order some kind of a power module? Yeah, I did. But they can forget about it now. It's finished. It's finished? It wasn't supposed to be finished for another month. Hello? You're sure it's my module, the one Ed's team was working on? No, 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 I have Charlie bring it over to my lab right away. <laughs> What's that all about? My missing link. Oh? Well, have a lovely weekend, Doctor. Well, I just may do that. Hello there, Doctor. Haven't seen much of you lately. Well, I've been working. Good for you. Nobody cares about hard work anymore. It's not like the old days. Then you worked around the clock, but it was exciting. You worked on simple things. You could see the results of your labor. Well, I guess things have changed a lot. Oh, now it's a big system. Everything is big and personal. <laughs> have a nice weekend. Well, you do the same, Charlie. Thanks well, a lot. Pleasure. Field activated. Flux field condition blue. Microprocessor activated. Gravity compensator normal. Systems indicator. All systems go. until Monday. Weekend, Agnes? Yes, thank you. Have you seen Dr. Perry? Not since Friday night. He was going into his lab. His lab's locked, and there's no answer when I knock. Maybe he hasn't come in yet. He never left. His bike was at the gate all weekend. I'm worried. Can someone let me in the lab? Not without Havison's OK. Hello? 
this time machine accounts for a deficit of over $20 million in mega funds. Well, yes, but you see, we didn't know... Who you thought the money was going over to the laser project. Well, uh, as you may know, Neil Perry has been one of our most reliable contributors. Uh, just a minute. He was responsible for destroying Sorry the Russian to satellite. You, sir. And Dr. It... Perry. Security needs your permission to open his lab. What's the matter? He's been in there since Friday. He doesn't answer the door. Frankly, I'm worried. I'll get security. I'm afraid something terrible might have happened. Someone looking for me? Dr. Perry. We've been looking all over for you. Neil, what in the world happened? I've just made a trip into time. You were explicitly told to drop that project. I was only told to begin a new one on Monday. Maybe you'd better sit down, Dr. Perry. Thank you. This trip, I assume, is concerned with your new time machine. Yes. There's, uh, there's so much to tell. There's so much that's important. It is not up to you to decide what's important to this company. Oh, wait a minute now. Dr. Perry's got something important to tell us. Let's listen to what he has to say. This trip you mentioned. When did it start? On well, Friday. I've been told that the time machine had been shelved, perhaps indefinitely. Go on. But I didn't want that to happen because I felt that the machine had a tremendous potential for good. And then later that afternoon, I discovered that the, the power module I needed was finished a month early. With the module in place, the machine was ready. At that point, I don't mind telling you I was scared, but I knew it might be my only chance to test the machine. I wanted to prove to you why it was so important. I had decided to go backward in time to the past. If the machine worked, maybe I could actually see some of the history I'd read about. I had no immediate sensation. Still, the readout told me I was moving. Then I glanced at the wall clock. I was actually moving backward in time. Things in the lab began to disappear. I was witnessing progress in reverse.
to ask you the same question. Look at his strange clothes. He's helping her escape. Of the devil. Confess your sin before God and man. What sin? You've been branded a witch. Your strange machine, this tool for making numbers. And this likeness of yourself, are they not instruments of the devil? No, they're instruments for good. Aha! So you admit to being a wizard and say you use these instruments for good? Well, yes, but I'm presenting you. No. He admits to the most insidious kind of witchcraft. Because of your magic, you have allowed the devil a more secure foothold in this town. Using the tools of the devil is the most grievous sin. We find this man guilty. You will not practice your magic further. We have decided that you and your treacherous machine must be destroyed together. You will both burn in the fires of hell. Burn, witch, burn! 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 Witch! Burn! Witch! Burn! Witch! Burn! Witch! Burn! 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 Burn!
Now listen, we could just sit down outside and talk about this. I can explain pretty much my situation. You greenhorns is all alike. Trying to rob a gold shipment? I wasn't trying to rob it. You can tell that to the circuit court judge. When will he be here? Oh, he'll be here. Don't you worry, he'll be here in about a month. Well, I'd done it again. Not only had I managed to stumble into the middle of the gold rush, but to get myself locked up as well. 20th century technology wasn't any help either. My machine was miles away in a mine where it might be found any minute. A small 20th century miracle that just might work. They spotted the younger brothers outside of town. Uh, younger brothers, huh? Those boys could be looking to rob the bank. You get out and find Frank. Go get him. Clem, uh, you check the other end of town. Don't you worry about the saloon. I'll handle that. You watch the bank. Howdy. I was hoping to get quietly out of town unnoticed. Nobody seemed to be paying much attention to me, which was just the way I wanted it. Hey, there goes that stranger. What's he doing out of jail? We just locked him up. Come on, let's get him. Gone to. He's got to be holed up somewhere. Well, 
Let's find out. Who we'll get it? I know you. Where do you think you're going? Hey, stop you! While I'd been in the saloon, the younger brothers had been busy robbing the bank. Now there were four of us all trying to get out of town at the same time. It's the younger brother. made it back to the mine. But what I saw below turned my blood cold. The miners were rigging a dynamite detonator, and my machine was still in the mine. You two go around the other side. Nobody escapes from my jail unless it's its feet first. Let's get him. <laughs>
sure never saw anything like that before. Me neither. traveled into the past and managed to return. I could hardly wait to call Haverson with the good news. I didn't see how he could drop the project once I told him about the test. I didn't know you were here. I completed the projections you asked for. Well, let's have a look. The probability factors on all of them appear to increase geometrically in time. Yeah, I figured they would. Considering our present increase of atomic waste and our proposed underground storage plan, the probability of eventual seepage and dangerous contamination would be 0.8 by the year 2000. By the year 3000... A certainty. The projection on the advanced laser project is just as frightening. By the year 4,000, there is certain to be dangerous ultraviolet radiation produced by the damaged ozone layer. These projections don't even include the new antimatter bomb. If we develop the destructive power the government requests, we may not make it into the 21st century. Has Haverson seen this? Yes. What did he say? Quote, things that far in the future cannot be predicted with any degree of accuracy, unquote. In other words, we have no proof. If it's proof he wants, well, maybe I can find him some. Now the time machine was more important than ever. It had a purpose, and so did I. We were going into the future to prove the world was planting the seeds of its own destruction. I decided to keep moving slowly forward in time.
I saw the reason for the lush vegetation. Man-made aqueducts carried the water from underground. There were other signs of human life as well. An intelligent civilization, judging from what I saw, but where were the people who built it? I heard the distant sound of what was apparently machinery. The tunnel was obviously man-made and sloped steeply underground. Was this the answer? Had the makers of what I saw retreated below the earth? stole my machine. My machine. Behind those doors, my machine. Wait. Listen to me. Well, if you don't understand English, let me try this. Look. Machine. The doors. Behind the doors. No? Ariel, no! No. Who is he? It's all right. He looks strange. I think he is sick. Sick? No, I'm, I'm not sick. He speaks our language. How did you get here? Well, in a machine, which you, you apparently locked behind those doors. Machine? Do you have a leader? Uh, someone that's a bit older that I can talk to? Ariel, my brother, is the eldest. Well, can you tell me how I can get behind those doors? 
you would not want to do that. Why not? The Morlocks would take you. Oh, dandy. Who, who are the Morlocks? You don't know? No, I don't. You've hurt yourself. Come. Let's take care of your face. Besides her incredible beauty, this girl of the future had a simple kind of personal magnetism. I had to admit it affected me. Still, she was as big a riddle as the Morlocks, whoever they were. My name is Weena. What's yours? Neil. <laughs> what strange names they have in your world. Well, it's not any stranger than we... <laughs> than what's happening here. Do we seem strange? Well... Are you hungry? Let me get you something. There. Try it. Not bad. Do you like it? It's different. Do you eat anything else? Only those. You don't cook anything? Cook? Yes, with fire. What is fire? Forget it. I saw a building earlier. Uh, what was it? Oh, that is where we live. So there are more of you than just, just this? No. We are all that remain of our people. What people? We are called the Eloi. Ah, uh, well, surely somewhere out there, there, there must be more people. No. Come, I'll show you. This building is all that remains to tell us of our history. Someone had gone to a lot of trouble to preserve the weapons of history. Perhaps as a tragic reminder that our mistakes seem to have a way of repeating themselves. And always, there were the innocent victims, like Weena. You seem so quiet. Oh, I was, I was just thinking. Just, uh... About what? No. What's that? Hmm? The recordings they project on the screen. That controls the picture. This is interesting. It's solar powered. Totally self-contained. We're told it's even older than the Eloy.
the beginning of the 21st century, scientific advancement had produced a test tube baby and a three-day work week. But it had not solved the problems of radioactive contamination and dwindling natural resources. Much of the planet had become unfit for human habitation. In the year 2004, a confrontation occurred in the Eastern Hemisphere. The confrontation, escalated by several terrorist groups, was over the control of a small remaining section of habitable land. What started as a limited war was rapidly spread to a larger confrontation of the world's major powers. Threats and counter threats were exchanged. As the war spread, countries were forced to take sides. And soon, the entire world was locked in conflict. destroying what was left of the habitable world and its population. Panic was everywhere. City after city crumbled in the destruction. The only safe place was underground. Then came the beginning of the end. The United States decided to use its new antimatter bomb. That's why I have to find my machine. I've got to warn them. You see, once long ago, my people lived below the earth. The air became unfit to breathe. Rays from the sun were too intense. When the Eloys finally returned to the surface, Everything was like that. All water disappeared. What's this? It was once a shield used to protect our land from the sun. But that was long ago. And the, uh, the Morlocks, how do they fit in? When the air was fit to breathe again, there was some disagreement among our people about returning. Why? Many had adapted to a life below the earth. Returning meant risks, hardships. So the Eloi returned and the Morlocks stayed below. And you think that they're the ones that have my machine? Mm-hmm. Well, so why don't we just talk to them and explain? You cannot do that. Morlocks and the Eloi have long since been bitter enemies. But if you're such bitter enemies, why, why do you stay here so close to them? We are surrounded by barren wasteland. The Morlocks allow us water from below. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why? We have never understood that either. And your elders? What happened to them? It will be dark soon. We must return to the others. You didn't answer my question. You will have your answer soon enough. What's going on? It is the night of the new moon. It will be very dark. So? The Morlocks will come. Weena. Where were you? I was worried. We were just walking. Have you told him? Not yet. Why? Will somebody tell me what's going on? 
I believe my sister was trying to spare you. But you must be told. Told what? Our parents and all the elders, they were once among us. One by one, they've been taken by the Morlocks. They've been taken? Why? We do not know. And they do this at night? Only when it is very dark. You are the oldest here. They will surely try and take you. That's a big order. Are you people friendly? Do they get along with each other? Sometimes. Is there fear in your world? Yes. There's also love and compassion. Then your world has hope for its future. I'm having a lot of doubts about that. But if you have love, and hope, then there must be a future. The Eloy, we have no hope for our future. I'm afraid our future is your past. I don't understand. I'm not from another world, Weena. I'm from this world, from, from your past. And it's that past that's brought the world to this. To a place without hope for its future? That's why I've got to return. To make people realize that our world is helping plant the seeds of destruction. Will they believe you? I don't know, but somehow I have to try. Shh.
take an aerial. And three others. You know the Morlocks have to have taken your people underground. But why? I don't know yet. But we have learned that their eyes can't stand the light. And that their weapons only paralyze for a short period of time. Apparently, they want us alive. Haven't you seen fire before? None of you? You can't touch the flame. It, it can hurt you. Is that what it did to the Morlocks? Well, in a different way. The light blinded them. But it does not hurt our eyes. Well, over the centuries, the Morlocks have adapted to the darkness underground. Their eyes have become very sensitive. When I first arrived, I saw a tunnel. Where does it lead? Underground to the Morlocks. What are you doing? I'm going after your brother and my time machine. You cannot do that. They'll take you, too. This torch will blind them. Keep them from getting near me. I'm going with you. No. You'd only increase the risk. How many tunnels do the Morlocks have? Two. The closest is beyond the ruins. Is there any other way below? Just the bronze doors. Neil. Stay together near the fire. I'll do my best to get your friends out. If I find my machine, I won't be back. It has to be that way. I'm sorry. Thank you, Neil. I saw something on the tunnel floor. Eloy clothing. How long had it been there? Could it be I was already too late? As I walked forward, I realized why the Morlocks allowed the Eloy water and why they took the eldest first. Like cattle, Eloy had become the food source of the Morlocks. Stay here. Send the 
rest out the other tunnel. Hey, get out of here! Ah. Ah. Get out! Ah. Eventually, the Morlocks are going to attack. What can we do? The only way civilization will survive is if the Eloi win over the Morlocks. We'd have to destroy them, all of them. I'm afraid that's the only choice we have. But how? <laughs> Maybe with plastic explosives. Like this. There's just a chance, if this has been sealed properly. Well, that's the real thing, all right. The question is, will it still work after all these years? If we can seal those two tunnels, the Morlocks will be trapped. What about the bronze doors? Well, that'll be my job. I'll have to find a way to get there. I've shown you how to activate these detonators. Now remember, don't know how long they're set for. So once you've activated them, your job is done. Get out as fast as you can. Any questions? OK, let's go. Please come back to us. I want to very much, Wynne.
get set, Neil. One last thing to do. The entrance out of the bronze doors had to be sealed. How do you see why I came back? We have to act, and we have to do it now. Can't you see? I'm offering you proof. We're destroying our planet. And you think we can stop that? Oh, we at least have to try. What makes you think the rest of the world would want the same? Tell the world what I found loud and clear, and I'll show them. That is precisely what we will not do. You heard, JR. The project is over. Dr. Perry is entitled to a large bonus for this development. But I thought... You didn't think! You would have realized what this device could mean to Mega. How do you mean, sir? We have in our hands a device that can give us the inside track on every major scientific breakthrough in the future. Now, if 
anybody has a competitive edge, it's us. Why, of course. We would know about every missile development, every weapon system. No, and... we are not going to use my machine that way. It's not your machine, Dr. Perry. Mega owns everything that you come up with. Not to mention the fact that you spent an excess of $20 million of our hard-earned capital. So that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> My boy, we want you on the mega team. We need a nice raise, of course. Once you think about it, you'll see our point. I can appreciate your concern, but we have to be realistic. You have a point. Well, you think about it and we'll talk. Fine. Well, this changes our financial position considerably. And you think you'll go along with it? Why should we care? We've got the prototype. Unless, of course, he decides to go off with it. He wouldn't. He couldn't! It is a possibility. Well, don't just stand there. Get somebody to seal up that lab. Now! Get me security. two weeks since Dr. Perry disappeared. We can find something else for you. Oh, no. No, thank you. Why? Well, I feel the same way about Mega Corporation that Neil did. All those terrible projects under production. He was a man ahead of his time. A man with the courage of his convictions. I know. He left us because he couldn't stop people like Worthington. Do you really think he'll be able to save the Eloy? If they can be saved, Neil's the one who can do it. And I hope he does. It's the only chance of survival for the human race. You know, I envy him. Because he'll be reshaping mankind. Taking all the knowledge of thousands of years, creating a world based on the good things man has achieved. He'll be giving civilization the chance for a truly new beginning. Oh, that's a tough assignment, even for Neil. He'll do it all right. After all, time is on his side. It's Dick Clark's Live Wednesday with Tom Jones, Aretha Franklin, David Sandberg, Charo, and Milton Burrow. Dick Clark's Live Wednesday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Next on Lifeline, Dr. Joanne Hodgman. Her job to save the smallest of all human lives. Lifeline, next on NBC. Later tonight on the NBC Late Night Movie, Joe Gerard stars in Killing Stones.